What's up, everybody? Scott and Ryan from the podcast here. Today we are in NFL draft mode, and we are going to bring you our 2020 NFL mock draft 1.0. Is that what you want to call it? I don't know. I don't really care. But regardless, we are going to be bringing you the first 16 picks of the NFL draft. The next 16 will be coming in another video. And we'll start off with the Bengals at number one. I think this is probably the only one we can for sure lock down. Everybody agrees, Joe Burrow. Yeah, Joe Burrow, number one to the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't think there's any discrepancy there. They need a quarterback. It's been rumored for forever now, ever since really the national championship game and even a little bit before that. Joe Burrow is the pick for Cincinnati. The only thing that could hold this up is Burrow saying that he just doesn't want to play for the Bengals at all. And I personally don't see that happening. So Burrow to the Bengals without a doubt at number one. I agree. And, and there was a lot of rumors coming out. Really, it was more a couple months ago about Burrow possibly pulling the pay, or the Eli Manning move and saying, I won't play for you. But I don't see that happening with Joe Burrow. He seems like a really stand-up guy that is willing to go into any team in any situation and build from the ground up. Burrow's exactly the kind of guy and player you want to have on your team. Joe Burrow to the Bengals. I don't see any issues with that. At number two, the Washington Redskins. We have them selecting Chase Young out of Ohio State. I think there's two possible picks for Washington here. It's Chase Young as really the consensus, but there's also the underlier that they could take to a I don't see it. I think that Chase Young is the guy. He is the number one talent, in my opinion, in this draft class. Coming off the edge, Chase Young, I think, is the surefire pick for Washington at number two. Oh, yeah, you said it. He is probably the best talent in this draft. And to me, he's the best edge rusher, I mean, talent-wise, that we've seen come out of the draft since Jadevian Clowney. This is a guy who has blazing speed coming off the edge. He's as strong as you want. And I mean, we saw the results that he brings at Ohio State. It's not just it's not just measurements and it's not just what ifs with this guy. He really performed there. And Ron Rivera, I think, is smart enough to realize that he needs to take the best player on the board in this situation. And that is just not to uh, it's Chase Young. Yeah, not to mention a new defensive head coach, Ron Rivera. You mentioned him coming in. So he's probably going to draft defense in the first round. But at number three, the Detroit Lions, I still have them going defense. So do you, Scott. I think Jeff Okuda is the pick here. They just got rid of Darius Slay, traded him to the Eagles. They don't have the secondary that is a formidable NFL secondary. They need to build that up. Jeffrey Okuda, without a doubt, the best corner, a lockdown guy. I got to watch him in the Fiesta Bowl live, and he just absolutely shut down Clemson for a large majority of that game. Jeffrey Okuda, I have him as one of my most talented players in this draft, and that's why he goes number three. I mean, yeah, Okuda's a really great corner. He's obviously the best on the board, and with Detroit, it's really just kind of a situation like, where do you start to salvage this mess that they've gotten themselves into? They still have a decent quarterback in Matt Stafford, but if you look around like that's, I mean, like what do they really have going for them in Detroit? I think in their situation, it's a lot like Washington. You have to just go and take the best player available and start from there. And that is Jeffrey Okuda at number three. I completely agree with that pick. I think that the line, they don't have a lot to salvage, but Jeffrey Okuda could start that stepping stone at number four. We have the New York Giants taking Isaiah Simmons. We had a little bit of debate here whether they were going to take an offensive lineman or take Isaiah Simmons, the versatile defensive player that will probably fit right in that linebacker. The biggest hole for the Giants defensively is at that linebacker position. Isaiah Simmons, probably the best player available. So I think Isaiah Simmons going to the Giants is not too controversial. No, not at all. I mean, you pretty much said it the best. And we have three teams behind the Bengals that don't have a glaring need at quarterback. I mean, they might in the future. They might even now, but they're all teams that we envision it give, giving another shot with their current quarterback, and they're probably just going to take the best player available. Not much to it. Speaking of a team that we think does need a quarterback, number five, Miami Dolphins. This is where Tua comes off the board. Tua Tungavailoa going to Miami. Uh, whether he sits behind Ryan Fitzpatrick for a year or not, that's yet to be seen. But 
the Dolphins, they've been tanking for Tua for the last year, it seems like. Now Tua finally falling into their lap. The only concern is earlier today, there have been reports coming out, or earlier when we were recording this video, there have been reports coming out that Tua didn't clear two teams' physicals. So if that team was the Dolphins, then that is a big red flag. But I think that Tua and Miami just makes too much sense, and it's been destiny for too long for him not to end up there. Absolutely, and if you would have told Dolphins fans at the beginning of the season that they were going to get the number five pick, they would probably be really disappointed because that means we can't get Tua. And that, I mean, they literally had the mantra of tank for Tua for so long. Dolphins fans love this guy. He's a really good young quarterback with a lot of talent. Obviously, the injury concerns are there, but they're starting a new culture with Brian Flores. It really looks like he's going to be a good coach for them and is building a new culture why not start that off with a new quarterback? Tua just seems like the perfect fit for the Dolphins, and he's really falling right into their laps. All right, so we have back-to-back -back quarterbacks going here. This time at number six, we have the Los Angeles Chargers taking Justin Herbert at number six. I think they have to go quarterback here. They just traded away Phillip Rivers. They do have Tyrod Taylor on the roster, but I don't think he's their guy of the future. So it's really between Justin Herbert and Jordan Love. I personally think Justin Herbert is the pick here. Scott, uh, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to go Justin Herbert too, so I'm going to go and drag him in from our player pool into the Chargers. I mean, listen, we both go to the University of Oregon. We both know that Justin Herbert can play football. We've seen him be a leader. We've seen him make all the passes he was asked to do. He fits into offenses nicely. The concern, obviously, is that he just hasn't been a quarterback that's taken many chances and shown off the big arm that much, but that was really because of how limited he was in the Oregon offense. I think Justin Herbert is a guy that you can plug into really any offensive system and just say, go run this, go be a leader, go be a guy you, we can depend on, and Herbert's going to be that guy. And you know who that is a lot of like is Phillip Rivers. And the Chargers love Phillip Rivers. I think Justin Herbert is the perfect heir apparent there. At number seven, the Carolina Panthers. We have them taking Andrew Thomas. In my opinion, the best offensive lineman in this draft. They just got a new quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. They have that running game or running back that is super dynamic in Christian McCaffrey. I could see them going defense here with the loss of Luke Keekley, but there just isn't a linebacker on the board that I think fits the bill at number seven. So I'm having them take the best offensive lineman available. And in our eyes, that's Andrew Thomas. Absolutely. The Panthers are a team that is in a very similar position as the Lions and Redskins. Don't have new head coach knew pretty much everything in Carolina. You're going to be moving on from franchise quarterback and Cam Newton officially. You just have to take guys that you can use as foundational building blocks. And Andrew Thomas is the best available offensive lineman, and he should have no problem succeeding in Carolina. We're going back-to-back -back offensive line. Number eight, the Arizona Cardinals. We have them taking Tristan Wirfs out of Alabama. They just acquired DeAndre Hopkins. They have that dynamic offense. The problem for the Cardinals last year was Kyler Murray was running for his life. And while he's very good at that, he's very good at escaping pressure, you want him to be more comfortable in the pocket. Getting one of the best offensive linemen in this year's draft class is going to help out the Cardinals offensive line tremendously. And Tristan Wirfs, I think, is the perfect guy that you can plug in and protect Kyler Murray. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Uh, Tristan Werps is, you know, just another really solid offensive lineman and exactly what the Cardinals need. We saw last year that Kyler Murray really can play. He's not just a college player. He can do this at the NFL level as well. And they have good skill players. They have a great offensive coordinator and head coach in Cliff Kingsbury. But the problem was, like you said, is that Kyler Murray was running for his life all year last year. And with any young quarterback, you want to protect them, especially when you're at such a pivotal stage when you don't have to pay them all that money and you really can build a Super Bowl contending team. We've seen the Eagles do it around Carson Wentz. We've seen the Seahawks do it around Russell Wilson. I mean, this is really really key years in terms of your competitive mode and you got a started offensive line because it was a mess for them last year at number nine the jacksonville jaguars we have them selecting Derek brown 
This just makes way too much sense. The defensive tackle out of Auburn, the Jaguars have given up so much on their defensive interior over the past few years. They gave up Malik Jackson coming into last season. They lost Calais Campbell in a trade, and they're about to lose Yannick Ngakwe as well. Derek Brown makes way too much sense. He is the most talented player on the board at this point, in my opinion. So I think going to Jacksonville, filling a huge hole, probably their biggest need, it just makes way too much sense here at number nine. Yeah, Derek Brown is a guy who I got to watch a lot at Auburn. I watched a lot of Auburn football, mainly because I was just so pissed about how they beat Oregon in the season opener. But what I saw consistently from Derrick Brown is that this is just mainly a big, big man, which is everything you want out of an interior de defensive lineman. But also, he has an extremely high motor, and he gives you 110% on every single play. It's really surreal. You don't normally see the big guys like that go after every single play so hard and give all their energy like that. Not only does he have the motor, not only does he have the size, he has great football skills, he has great feet, great hands, and he can really hit the two gap holes really, really well. Derek Brown is a guy that the Jaguars will be really lucky to get at number nine, and hopefully they can keep him unlike they have their uh, other defensive linemen that they've drafted. At number 10, the Cleveland Browns, we have them taking Jedrick Wills out of Alabama. This seems like another piece to the offense for Cleveland and they have the skill position players around Baker Mayfield. For me, adding Jedrick Wills shores up the offensive line, giving Baker Mayfield every piece that he needs to be successful and really removes the variables on the Browns season and the Browns offense and Jedrick Wills, one of the most surefire offensive linemen in this draft, could really help shore up that Browns offensive front for what they gave up last season to get Odell Beckham and Kevin Zietler. So adding Wills makes too much sense for me. Yeah, this Browns offense is, I mean, let's face it. They've got a lot of talent. Jan Landry, Odell, Chubb, Baker. I mean, if we think Baker Mayfield will be all right. Really, the jury's still out on him. But they need that offensive line to shirt up and ensure that those guys can make their plays at the highest level. It was a big problem for them last year. You don't really see any other glaring needs at the offensive skill positions for the Browns. And I, yeah, it just makes all the sense in the world for the Browns. At number 11, the New York Jets. We have them taking C.D. Lamb. They just got rid of Robbie Anderson. He left in the offseason. They need a number one receiver with Sam Darnold. And C.D. Lamb, I think, is the guy to do it. He's the same archetype as Robbie Anderson, but I think he does it a little bit better. He's a little bit more versatile, and I think that he can develop into a legitimate number one where Robbie Anderson just couldn't, and adding a new young piece for your young quarterback is exactly what the Jets need to get their offense going. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sam Darnold is a guy that they spent their first overall pick in the draft, so they are totally committed to him. The Jets have a lot of holes on this team, but really the first thing that you want to sure up when you have a young quarterback is that he has a receiver that he can bond with and develop that special connection with. It's really, really important for long-term success. And C.D. Lamb is a guy that fits right into Sam Darnold's play style, right? I mean, he's a speedster just like Robbie Anderson was, and they had a really good connection. So hopefully kind of a younger version of that with a little bit more football skill will mesh well with Sam Darnold, and they can build a nice wide receiver quarterback connection for years to come with that pick. Another wide receiver coming in here at number 12, the now Las Vegas Raiders taking Henry Ruggs. He's a speedster out of Alabama. You know how the Raiders love their speed, love that just blazing speed on the outside. They need a number one receiver. Last year, it was Darren Waller at the tight end position doing all the work. Henry Ruggs could serve to be that number one receiver on the outside. They thought they were going to have that with Antonio Brown. Clearly, that wasn't the case. I think Henry Ruggs could be the perfect wide receiver for whatever quarterback is there in Oakland, or excuse me, in Las Vegas now, whether it's Marcus Mariota starting or Derek Carr. I think Ruggs is the perfect complement. Absolutely. And I think a really important thing to remember about Ruggs is, yes, he is a speedster 
and yes, he can do all these crazy things down the field, but he is also a good physical player, especially for someone at his size. This is a guy that can run intermediate routes, short routes. He can even block for you a little bit. So Ruggs, I think, is a really underrated prospect, and the Raiders will be getting him for really a steal at number 12, and that's a receiver that you can depend on to do a lot of things for you for a long, long time. He reminds me of like a mix. I'm, this might be a weird comparison, so forgive me here. But he reminds me of a mix between Tyreek Hill and DeAndre Hopkins. I think he can I think he can really be one of the best receivers in the league for a long time. I wish he would fall to my Eagles, but unfortunately the Raiders are probably gonna snag him up if the Jets don't. We're going for the trifecta of wide receivers here. The 49ers with the 13th pick. This is the pick they traded with the Colts for. I have them taking Jerry Judy. They just got rid of Emmanuel Sanders. He went to the Saints. Jerry Judy is a legitimate number one receiver that the 49ers need. They have Debo Samuel, they have Kendrick Bourne, they have Marquise Goodwin, but I think they need a legitimate number one on the outside, and that's Jerry Judy. George Kittle, he can be that number one pass catcher, but if he's blocking and pass protection, and he's not as much of a wide receiver number one as he is just an overall offensive number one. I think Jerry Judy could be a true dynamic duo with Kittle and make this 49ers offense truly dangerous, give Jimmy G all the weapons he needs, and put Judy on the outside at number 13. Absolutely. This 49ers team does not have a lot of obviously they just made the Super Bowl last year and arguably had the best roster in the NFL. That being said, like, like you mentioned, they don't have really that number one wide receiver. They have a deep core, but not that number one guy. Garoppolo's still young. Obviously, so is Jerry Judy. You could pair those guys together and really make a special connection. And that offense could take the next step from just being kind of an offense that depends a lot on trick plays and crazy schemes to an offense that can depend on a quarterback throwing to two of the top weapons in the league in Kittle and Jerry Judy. Number 14, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have them taking Makai Becton out of Louisville. They just added Tom Brady. They need to protect him. I look at the Bucs very similar to the Browns where they have the weapons on the outside. They have the pieces surrounding Tom Brady, but they don't have the offensive line just quite yet. And Makai Becton could solidify that offensive line, help protect an aging Tom Brady, and could really help this Buccaneers offense really excel. I think Bruce Arians and the Buccaneers are all in on the offensive end, adding Tom Brady, and now adding a guy to protect him in Makai Becton. Absolutely. The Buccaneers are going to want to protect Tom Brady at all costs. But the worry is that in the draft, you can draft an offensive lineman, but he might take a couple years to develop. I think Makai Becton is a guy that you can plug into your offense from day one, and he will be effective simply because of his size. This is a guy that is 6'7", 360 pounds, and he doesn't have any kind of drop off with speed because of that. He's got nimble feet, and he's honestly one of the more athletic offensive, offensive linemen in this draft. I think he's going to be a really good pick for the Buccaneers, and he is a guy that they can plug into that offense right away as they're going to try to be a contender from year one in this Tom Brady era. At number 15, the Denver Broncos take C.J. Henderson, the cornerback out of Florida. I think Henderson is the best prospect available at this point, and he fits a need for the Broncos. They just got rid of Chris Harris Jr. Henderson can come in right away, help solidify that Broncos secondary, and go back to that real no-fly zone defense that they had in Mile High that brought them pretty much to the Super Bowl along with that stellar defensive front seven. CJ Henderson could be one of those pieces to come into Denver and just be a true number one cornerback. Absolutely. And, you know, he's a corner that has all the ability on the football field that you look for. He has a great head on his shoulders. He's got good speed and he's a good tackler. But the thing that you worry about with him in the NFL is that he's just a little bit undersized. I still think he's a really good prospect and the Broncos will be getting value with that pick and they obviously need a corner, but there is the size concern there. Number 16, the final pick of this part one, the Atlanta Falcons. 
We have them going with Josh Jones, the offensive lineman out of Houston. Atlanta struggled a little bit last year in their pass protection, and we all know the pieces that are surrounding Matt Ryan. They have all of the guys that you would want. They have Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. They just added Todd Gurley, but the offense just wasn't clicking for some reason, and that was a large part due to pass protection. Adding Josh Jones, who is one of the best offensive linemen available, putting him into the system. The Falcons drafted offensive line last year. I think they do it again this year and take Jones at number 16. Absolutely. This is another guy that is flat out big. Falcons need an offensive lineman. They expect to contend right away. And again, this is a team that has guys at the skill positions that can make a lot of noise, but they really need to shore up that offensive line, especially for a quarterback like Matt Ryan that has been showing that he's a little bit injury prone over these past few seasons. All right, guys, thanks for watching part one. Part two will be released shortly after this one. So make sure to go check that out as well. When that drops, we'll be back for pick 17 through 32.